Okay, back again. This one, I forgot to mention a couple of things. Right there. Temple year 980, when the Lord actually dies. That is two 490s back to back, as if the first temple never went down. So the Lord is dying relative to the temple on two 490s. I want you to notice that balance is back here. Because remember, the temple was dedicated in the 490th year of the Exodus. So that was definitely a deadline. Alright? Because David had died and got his thousand year grants, it's okay that this is late, but God is still keeping track of the fact that that's seven years later. The question is why? Alright? So obviously that is being tied up and balanced right here. In other words, and, and this is really important, the temple's time got met. So it's okay if the temple goes down. <coughs> Excuse me, I swallowed something wrong. It's okay if the temple goes down. That's real important. I'm going to give you a second to think about that. i got to get some water. Just look at the screen for a minute. Okay, back. So, Exodus, the temple, David's birth, and the fact that it's seven years early versus Daniel 9 are all being accounted there. The timing of his death. Bear in mind that he dies because that he's rejected by Israel. God is not gerrymandering time. All right. This is all free will playing. So obviously first he knew what free will would do and then the parts that only God can author, he designed to make this all fit without violating free will. That's real important. Okay, there are certain things that only God can do. For example, only God makes you human and he makes you human at birth. So it's up to God and only God can do that to decide who will be born. When my body came out of my natal mother's womb, God had to decide whether or not he was going to impute a soul to that body or not. And if he didn't do it, that fetus would have never been alive. The same pattern as Genesis 2-7. So God had to decide that brain out would exist. He could have said no. Once I exist, then I can make any kind of decision I want. And I either have the power to execute the decision or I don't. But I can will anything I want. The power to do what I will is a whole other set of attributes has nothing to do with the will I can will to be a butterfly if I want to but the power to execute being a butterfly is depends on my other attributes it does not depend on my will it depends on my other attributes by the same token I can lift my hand up or put it down that depends on both you know my hand depends on my will willing it but my hand is capable of doing what I tell it to do all right, to a certain extent. See, that's the distinction. So freedom is being taken into account here. And God had promised time to the Jews. So here he's telling us that it was done on time by means of Christ's death occurring on time so that the temple time was complete, except for one fact. 
There were 40 years left to run out of the temple because Israel was in the wilderness 40 years before she entered the land. She was supposed to enter the land the first year and didn't. So the only amount of time left was it was due to the fact that instead of having a temple built, she had a tent. And so the 40 years comparable to wandering in the wilderness remained. And all the Jews knew that. That's why the book of Hebrews came out. <clears throat> and, you know, Paul is playing with the 40 years also, as we're going to see. So that was the first thing I wanted to recap there. We already went through 1077. By the way, 1077 is 27 plus 50. 77 is 27 plus 50. Isaiah was playing on that when he came up with his 462 syllables. The, the official syllables were 462. There are um, 365 syllables in abeyance, an ellipsis between um, Isaiah 53, 11 and Isaiah 53, 12. That stands for temple time being reimbursed because the temple stood for 364 years. And then Isaiah had also left in ellipsis 252 years between Isaiah 52, 4, 15 and Isaiah 53, 1 to get to the 1077. Okay, those three pieces add up to 1077. But the, 10, but the official syllables were 462. That's 28 short of 490. Again, because the 28 is divisible by 7 and 27 is not, okay, the year, your 28th year begins on your 27th birthday. So see, that's why Paul's also bracketing here. All right, 1077, 27. He's taking in, it's kind of cute because, see, this is the, the temple year from dedication, but it's a hidden 27 because when you're measuring from the foundation, you got to add another 10 years, okay? which is playing on David's Hebron kingship again. So see, there, it's 17 and 27 here. See, these people really knew their numbers, all right? And so that's a play on 50, the Lord at age 50, okay? Now, in addition to that, We have our next stop is 4146, which is Temple Foundation Year 1000. See how it's sandwiched? This is 17, and this is 17. And these are significant ties that are sandwiched between these two. This is 17 and 27 at the same time. This is 17 and 27 at the same time. All right? The reason why he's doing that is these are all potential rapture dates, which are most likely based on mirroring because God uses time to mirror. So now what Paul is doing is saying, well, you know, we're all used to God's timing with mirrors. So what if he creates rapture mirrors, rapture mirrors on the Lord was dead at 33. So when he's dead for another 33 years, year 66, maybe the rapture will happen then. Which, of course, to history, we know that as 66 to 73, which 66 is Flores, when the Jews started to rebel in Jerusalem, and 73 is Masada. That's not bad. Of course, the, t the temple goes down in the middle of that, you know, in AD 70. And what did Daniel 9.27 say? The temple was supposed to go down in the middle. Of course, that's why all the preterists don't understand that, you know, Israel yet has a future because they're missing the hanging chad in the 62nd week that it did not play. Because Christ died seven years earlier than he should have. So Paul is referencing when Christ should have died. This is the missing hanging chad seven. That's why he's bracketing it. See, if there's a hanging Chad 7, then this 7 has to play before the tribulation can play. So now he's trying to account for the two 7s. Okay? So we got 4143, which is temple year 987. Very, very obvious. Okay? And then you add 10 years to that, 997 
to take into account when the temple was founded versus when it was dedicated. Okay, so now when you do that, the Lord would be age 50 instead of age 40. 50, of course, is a very pregnant term. Okay, and that, look at this, is 1050 from David's united kingship. That would be, that would be a real appropriate year for the temple to go down. Not the only one, but it's appropriate. Okay, 1050 from David's united kingship is 1053, which is 10 years after this. And that's 10997 from Temple's dedication and 1007 from Temple construction. And what would 007 be? This would be 1057 from David's Hebron kingship. 1057. Oh, and David 10007, well, when the Lord was born, okay, he was born in the thousandth anniversary of, of David's United Kingship start, but it would have been the thousand seventh year of David's Hebron Kingship start. So you see, this is, this is some clever time for, and the Lord is 50. 50 means Jubilee, 50 means Pentecost. You see how, how rich that is? So that would be a, t a potential year. And then if the temple went down in 997, okay, three and a half years after that would be temple year 1000. Okay, so one of the potential rapture dates would have been 4153. Except for one small problem, and that's where we got to go backwards in time. Right here, 4146. 54 years to the millennium is what that number represents. This is yet another tie. It's temple year 990. Okay, look again. It's also temple foundation year 1000. Think about that for a second. Fifty-four years. Remember Abram? He super matured in 2046 up here. Okay. 1050 from his super maturation, David is crowned at Hebron. Hebron. Year 1050 from that, which is 54 years. To Abram, you see the back and forth, you see the clever tie there? 1050 from Abram to Hebron. Okay, 1050 from Hebron is that, which is also 54 years to the beginning of the millennium. Evocative of the 54 years Abram matured early. So, Seven years after this, mm -hmm. yeah, seven years after this is ten years after this, 4153. Is that cute or what? That would be Temple Foundation Year 1010. Temple Year 997, so the, the Tribulation could have ended three years after that. Three and a half, really. See how clever? See, if it's 54 years to the millennium here, three years after that is 51 years, 50 years, you know, give or take how you want to measure it. All right. Seven years after that is 40, yeah. 54, 47 years. Paul actually benchmarks the 47 as a mirror. So think about this now. 47 and 47 is 94. 94 is the outer limit of when maybe 
the millennium would occur. I mean rapture, not millennium. Because Paul is adding seven years here. Christ would have been 98 in year 4200 from Adam. He would have been in his 98th year. 98 is divisible by 7. 97 would have been his birthday. Because 9, yeah, you understand that. Okay, so now he's playing on the reimbursement to the Gentiles of the lost time. And then takes it seven years beyond that. Because see, this is 4146. Seven years beyond that is 4153. And the Lord would be age 50. It would be the year, the year 1050 from David's united kingship. Okay, that's really clever, huh? It would also be 1057 years from David's Hebron kingship, reflecting the seven-year overage that gets made up. Is this cute or what? Okay, and I'll continue with more of that in the next